If we're going to talk about some freaky stuff, are we? <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about shining light through walls. Shining light through walls. Yeah. So there's a new type of particle that you can introduce to the standard model, and you introduce it because it solves some problems that exist in the interactions that make protons and neutrons, so the, the strong interactions. So they're called axions. Why that, what does that mean? Um, so axion was originally the name of a brand of washing powder, I think, and uh, the name was given to the particle because they clean up a mess that exists. In, in the strong interaction. What's this mess in the first place? What needs the cleaning up? There's a, a symmetry in this sector that shouldn't exist. So a symmetry between particles and antiparticles that, that actually we don't expect from the theory. What that means is that there's one parameter, one number, that tells you how, whether this, if that number is zero, the symmetry exists. If the number is non-zero, then the symmetry doesn't exist. And what you'd expect is for that number to be large and for the symmetry to be completely uh, broken. But what we see when we do measurements is, in fact, that, that that symmetry's there. So there's a number that you have to tune to be really, really small. And that's, that's kind of uncomfortable from, from building theories. We don't like having to make numbers really, really small. If, if you had a, a particle and you flip its charge and you, you do a reflection in space, um, if this symmetry exists, it tells you that you should get back to the same thing. So flip the charge. Uh, invert everything, do a mirror reflection of everything, physics should look the same. That's in fact what we see, um, but the theory predicts that, that we shouldn't see that, that there should be some differences when you, when you do this interchanging. Theory isn't quite matching what happens in reality. Right. And you just invent a particle to paper over the cracks. Like yeah. that, that seems... That's basically what we do in, in physics. That um, doesn't seem right to me, that seems naughty, that, seem, that doesn't seem elegant. Uh, so, so the idea, the hope is actually that it's a more elegant solution. So instead of having to have this one number be really, really small, what this new particle, so this new particle replaces that number that you have to make really small. And instead of just deciding that it's small and that's the end of the story, you have a way of explaining how it evolves to be small. Just about anything they can do, Axion can undo. This particle is postulated because yeah. it solves a problem for you. What, what would we know about it? Would it have a mass? Would it have a charge? Would it, is it like a bit? Like, like what, what, if this particle exists, mm -hmm. tell me about it. Yeah, it, it exists. It has a mass that you don't know. It has interactions with all of the other fields of the standard model. And in fact, that's what makes it really interesting because those interactions give rise to some cool things that we can then go and try and see. If this particle exists, mm -hmm. can't we find it? Like, would we not just now go and test for it and yep. break things apart and... Like, has, are people looking for it? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, that's what this light shining through walls stuff is. It's a way of trying to look for these new particles because they interact with photons. So what can happen is as a photon travels through a magnetic field, it can turn into an axion. So the idea of, of the experiment that people are doing, there's one uh, at a lab in Hamburg in Germany at the moment that they're building. So the idea is you have a big magnet and you shine a laser beam through the, through the core of the magnet and you put a wall in the middle. So laser on one end, camera on the other, wall in the middle. So you shouldn't be seeing any light in the camera. But if these axions exist, as the photons from the laser beam travel through the magnetic field, they can turn into axions. And the axions don't care about the wall. They very happily travel through the wall. And then if you're lucky, the reverse process happens on the other side. Your axion turns back into a photon, and that's what you see in your camera on the other side. What you need is a really strong, really long magnet, and then you can try and, and find, find axions. The nice thing about this experiment is there's, there's no background. You, uh, if, if axions don't exist, you expect to see nothing. So if you see something, that tells you an axion is there. As soon as you see something, you know there's an axion. You've got a, a limited number of photons in your laser beam. You know, the more photons you can put into your magnet, the the higher the chance that one of them turns into an axion. So that's the kind of engineering challenge of doing this, getting as many photons uh, inside your magnetic field as you can, turning up the magnetic field strength. But it's, not, it's not like photons are a scarce commodity. You just could shine the laser for, for years and just wait for one to happen. Right, um, and that's what people, people are trying to do, in fact. It's just, it's just a case of um, getting the money, building the kit, and, and then leaving it to run, basically. Has this been built? Is this running or not? So the, the, the f um, so it's called the ALPS experiment, so the Any Light Particle Search or Axion Light Particle Search. 
uh, and a first iteration of it ran a couple of years ago. For particle physics, a cheap thing to do because they've been able to essentially cannibalise some old magnets that used to be part of a particle collider um, and use those, turn those into, into an axion set. Um, so they, they did this kind of as a proof of concept a couple of years ago and now they're building um, a hundred metre long detector to try and search for axions. So that should be coming, that should be turning on in a couple of years. Because you know so little about axions, um, you don't know how likely it is that the photon is going to turn into an axion. So it could have been very likely and if we'd have been lucky, the experiment that already ran would have seen it. Uh, we weren't that lucky. So it's a lot rarer than that. So you, you have to sort of just keep running your experiment with more sensitivity. 